Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. I'm working on my guitar build here for the Great Guitar Build Off 2020. And in this video, we're going to talk about joining the neck. So I'm going to show you a better way to do a bolt-on neck because I've left myself, for access reasons, a fairly small surface here. And I can't just throw four screws in there. I need something better. So I'm going to show you how I do this. Uh, what we are going to be doing is a combination of machine screws, so bolts basically, and threaded inserts. That's going to be a lot sturdier than just using wood screws. And uh, yeah, it's going to give us a better option for holding this thing in place nice and stable because the last thing I want is this pulling out. We've got less space than we normally would with like a fender joint or something like that and I'm only going to be able to use three of these things and only one of them up top. So that is... That is important. That's what we're going to have to do is change this. I'm also going to be doing some uh, some shaping back here to make this neck joint a little bit more comfortable, which is going to result in even less wood back here. But before I do that, I want my nice straight flat surface here so that I can drill my holes. Once I've got those drilled, we'll move on. Let's bring you in closer here and you can take a look at how I'm doing this. So for starters here, I need to position my holes in a way that makes sense, which means I'm going to drill them from the front through this, through the body, so that I know where they're going to sit in this cavity. I'm not going to drill them from the back because from the back, I can't see where the, where the neck pocket ends. So we're going to do that. And we always start with a pilot hole. You don't want to be going through with the full width of the hole that you're going to be ending up with right off the bat. So I've got, I'm going to run a 964. It doesn't really matter. Something like an eighth inch or, or something in that range to do your pilot holes is usually good. And we're going to drill from the front. At the end of this, I'm going to have to countersink and everything to get those bolts to go in properly. Let me show you what we're dealing with there. So the bolts I have for this is quarter inch 20 thread. Pretty straightforward. They're not super long though. I don't want to keep the full width of that neck, uh, the heel, sorry. I don't want to keep the full width of the heel there. So they're fairly short. I'm going to have to do some work to get down into a range where those will work properly. And then those are going to go into these little threaded inserts, which are going to bite. Let me see if I can get you a better view there. Those are going to bite really nicely into the neck and then we'll bolt right into them. And they're about as long as you're going to want to go. If you can see that. Yeah, that's what we need. Um, I may even glue these in. I might use a little bit of super glue, probably will to glue them in place. So that, is how we're going to get the strength we need. Let's start drilling some holes. And yes, I'm wearing sandals in the shop. It's hot out and I'm not doing anything too crazy. So for starters, I want to mark where I'm putting these. So I'm going to put one up here and I want to put this actually relatively close to the top so I get the best, um, well, <laughs> the best strength there essentially. Let me make sure that there's plenty of room for that. Yeah, that'll be okay. Maybe just a little further down. Okay, so that's that one. Put one in this corner. See if I can measure it a little bit. Oh, that's perfect. And then one. Just a full bolt head away from the edge is what I'm doing. Um, because when all said and done, it'll only be half a bolt head away from the edge. So there we go. I've got my three marked. Now, we don't just use the pilot hole to avoid damaging the wood and everything. We also use it for a little added precision. The smaller the hole you drill, the easier it's going to be to aim everything and whatnot. So doing this first. Be careful to keep your drill nice and vertical, okay? A drill press is better. I don't have one at the home workshop, so... I just have to be careful, make sure I'm nice and vertical, do this a bit at a time. And try not to smack into this when I go through. All right, there we are. Now I'm going to have probably just a touch of tear out on the back there, which is again part of why we're using uh, 
a pilot hole. Clamping your piece down is also a good idea, by the way. Two down, one to go. Make sure I use the right mark. And there we go, pilot holes are done. Now there's a little bit of tear away here as well, so I'm gonna go in with a razor blade and just scrape everything a little bit. Make sure my surfaces are nice and clean. That'll work. Looks good. Let's take a look at the back. A little bit of tear away there as well. Cut this piece off so I don't pull a bunch of fiber even though I'm sanding this after. Looks good. Okay. Now I need to get these holes marked on my neck. So this is the important part, the, I won't call it challenging per se, but the stressful part because you need to get these in the right position. And if anything, you want them positioned just a hair off so that they pull the neck tighter. You certainly don't want to risk having them in a position where they push the neck further away from the body. But basically all we need to do here, that's a nice tight neck joint by the way, good job Crimson, uh, is drill from the back again to mark these. Ideally you would be able to clamp this in place I don't really have that option available to me. So what I'm gonna do is just put down a piece of foam here that my fretboard is going to run along. I'm gonna make sure that the neck is in there really good and I'm going to apply some pressure to this joint as I drill. That's about all I can do because of the setup that I have here. But this should work just fine. So yeah, applying, making sure that's in nice and tight, applying some pressure here, and I just go in. Get those marked on the back. Make sure you don't let yourself go too far there. So I've just got three nice little holes there. Now they're a little close to the end. So let's make sure that's not gonna be a problem. That's gonna be perfect, no problem. All right, so those are marked on the neck now. Now it's time to drill these out wider. So we've got a quarter inch screw here and the obviously that doesn't fit through our basically eighth inch hole. The tendency is people want to drill these out at a quarter inch. They want that hole in the body to be the same width. My recommendation is don't do that. Do them a little bit wider. We want the tightest joint we can get between the body and the neck. It's just better that way. Some people think it affects sound transfer. For me, it's more a case of just making sure that everything is nice and solid. So we drill that out a little bit wider so that we don't have to worry about the bolt threading into the, into the body and pushing it. Really the only contact we need is at the back here where it's sucking in and against the neck where it's pulling, right? So yeah, that's it. Drill the hole a little bit wider, problem solved. Now the head on these bolts is almost precisely a half inch. And I'm not putting ferrules in the back of this. Uh, I may do a custom plate, I don't think so. Whoop, just about had the guitar fall over. 
Um, so what I'm going to do now, because like I said before, these aren't long enough. So if I push that through now, it comes barely through. And then if I were to countersink it, it come through, you know, whatever, a little bit further. But I want it to go almost all the way into that threaded insert uh, to give myself as much strength in this thing as possible. So what I'm going to do is take a half inch Forstner bit and come down, well, a little further, probably quarter inch, three eighths of an inch uh, into this. And then the screw will sit really nice right in there. It'll have more thread coming out for the other added strength. And instead of countersinking it, I'm just going to use tension to compress it in there, compress the wood a little bit and make sure that I'm getting a strong joint. I don't want to remove much more than that. Once I've got that done, I'll test it and then I'll know how much of this area I can take off for more access if I want to do that. So that's next. We're going to drill in with the Forstner bit. Now the Forstner bit has a very specific depth to it and you can mark them with tape. It's a little bit tough with this kind of bit though, but that is basically exactly what I want to take off. So I'm just going to drill in to the top of the bit section, the cutting section, and try that out. Unfortunately, Forstner bits get a little off track if you do them with a big pilot hole like this. So you've got to be careful. It's not too bad. Um, if, I should have done this after the 8th inch bit. There we go, now that sits down in there, comes out adequately far, and we should be good. I guess it's time to get those threaded inserts installed. So these actually are a little bit conical. So you of course need enough width to be able to get the bottom in there, and then they're gonna spread the wood a bit. You gotta be very careful um, not to, well, split the wood. So I'm about as close to the edge there as I would want to go. I'm going to switch to a bit that, uh, that makes sense for this one, obviously, and then mark it so I'm sure I don't drill any deeper than this. I'm just going to mark it with some masking tape. So let's get that done. So that's about right. Leave myself a little flag there so I don't miss it and so that it blows the dust away as I go. Probably take a quick look here. Yeah, that'll be fine. Looking good now. All right, holes are drilled. Everything's looking all right here. Good, good. So what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of glue. I'm gonna make it wood glue in this case to just kind of make sure everything's nice and sturdy, filled in, good to go. And then I'm gonna bolt these in. Let's get to it. Don't want to add too much of this. I don't want it all squeezing out all over the place. But I'm going to fill in any like extra space in the hole and add some adhesive in there. And yeah, that should do the trick. So. I can already sense that these are going to be a pain. <laughs> oh, well. Be 
gonna have to push when you do this. But hey, that's how you know it's working. You gotta put some force in to get it in there. That's how you know it'll take quite a bit of force if ever you needed to get it out. Uh, so pulling on it with a bit of string tension won't do it. tight. Alright, those are in. I heard a cracking noise and I see a tiny little crack here. So I'm going to fill that with a bit of super glue and a wicking tip right now. I'm using my thin star bond on this one. Use the thin stuff so it gets into that crack as much as possible. Make sure the tip's clear when I go to do that. What I like to use is a guitar string. Go figure. Looks good. And I need one of these small wicking tips that comes with it. If you're looking for this Starbond glue, this is kind of my go-to. Uh, as you may know if you watch my channel, I'll put a link in the description. You can actually get a 10% discount, I think it is, with my code that I will also have down there. All right, certainly a little bit of super glue is not going to hurt anything, but just to avoid potentially making a mess. I'll make myself a little tray there. So we get kind of that capillary action. It shows me that the crack, oh, can you see that? Probably not. Here, let me zoom in. It really accents the crack uh, because it's so thin. It flows right into it and fills it up completely. So now we can see exactly how far it cracked, whereas before the crack was so small I couldn't. This thin glue is extremely thin, so I'm actually going to put a little bit around my ferrule as well. And I'll have to sand this all flat after, maybe even grind, grind it down a little bit to deal with some of the metal. But I want to make sure that everything is nice and solid and sturdy in there. Okay, that's more than full now. So first order of business, I'm gonna get this off of here and cleaned up so that I can continue to use it and not have to buy 20 of these. I heard someone say that if you blow through these, they can blow back. So wear eye protection if you're doing this. Clean them out a little bit or just don't blow through them, you know, whatever works. I feed this through a couple times. Make sure that that path is nice and clear all while trying to avoid gluing myself to my string. And I'm gonna actually let that sit for a moment and dry. And I'll throw out the little wick tip. And finally, I'm gonna hang this off the edge and hit it with a little bit of Starbond Accelerator. All right, well there it is. Looks good and sturdy. I don't think that's gonna be a problem. All right guys, so there you have it. As promised, a separate video on how I'm joining the neck to this thing to make sure that it's good and solid and I don't have to worry about it coming out, even though we've got a little less space there for the joint than we usually would. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe so you can see the rest of this build series along with, uh, yeah, many others. I also hope you guys like the design. As always, thanks for watching, have a good one, and I will see you next time.